Hello, welcome to my Let's Play of Screeps. Screeps is a programming game. I played this game about a year ago when it came out for about a hundred hours. It's really fun. You know, it's a good game if you, uh, you know, if you're a programmer. Basically, in this game, you design the AI of the system um, using JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, in this Let's Play, I'll be using TypeScript. Um, let's go connect to the official server and take the tutorials. I'm going to just restart um, the game. So it says, welcome to Screeps. Choose a room to found your colony. Colony should meet the requirements of not being occupied, has a controller, has energy sources. And they just recently added um, shards, shard one and shard, shard zero and shard one. Shard one being uh, 2.2.0 seconds per tick, which is a lot faster than the original five seconds or 4.4 seconds. So when we do claim a room, we'll play on shard one. For a while, I'll just play on a private server. Since I played last time, they added a private server ability. So I'll just do that until I get, uh, get the code up and running. But for now, let's just do the tutorials for folks that don't know how to, haven't played this game before. All right, so it says, welcome to Screeps. This tutorial will help you learn the basics of the game concept step by step. You can take it later, but we strongly advise you to do it now before you start a real game. Screeps is a game for programmers. If you don't know how to code in JavaScript, check out this free interactive course. I am not a professional JavaScript programmer or TypeScript programmer. I spend most of my time programming in C++ or C Sharp, but I'm, I know the basics and I can always search it up. So let's get started. Remember, if you accidentally close a hint, you can always open up this button. Let's begin. The playing field is called a room. In a real game, the rooms are connected with each other through exits. These are the exits. But in simulation mode, only one room is available to you. The object in the <coughs> center of the screen is your spawn. There's a spawn. It's your colony center. And the game has a bunch of docks that we'll be looking at at some point later. So begin by writing the code at the bottom of your screen. There's a console tab. And you can enter you can enter stuff on this console tab. So you, it just says enter whatever you want. Press enter. So then it says gives you an error, commands return response, execution error. All output is duplicated to your browser and you can look at the debugging stuff. And now we're gonna write something for real. So here we're going to spawn a new unit called a creep so you call a method called create creep usually this method is in the docs and you give it basically body parts to get that give it skills so in this one we're giving it a work carry and move body part and we're calling it a harvester all right and then uh, so let's do that so let's copy paste this into the command line and then my little spawner dude will slowly create the harvester. All right, great. Now you have a harvester one, which you can control. You can see it by clicking on it, looking at the view. Hide the editor to pane with Alt Enter, and select your creep. Here you can see characteristics of the object you're looking at, values of the characteristics, and. The and so on. So it's got a carry capacity of 50. It's got three body parts, work, carry, and move, just like we told it. Time to put the creep to work. A valuable game resource. This yellow square is energy source. It can be harvested with creeps by one or more work body parts and transported to the spawn with carry parts. So you basically, so work is basically like your pickaxe carries kind of like your inventory and then move has usually gives you legs and lets you move around all right so to give your screeps to give your your creep a permanently working command the console's not enough since we want the creep to work all the time so we'll be using the script tab so you open up the script and this is like the in-game editor i'll be using visual studio code um, but for now we're just going to use this thing you can write scripts that run on a permanent basis each each game tick in a loop. It allows you to const 
It allows writing constantly working programs to control the behavior of your creep, even while you're offline. In the real game only, not in simulation mode. So the nice thing about this game is once you write the code, you can just close the whole game and it'll continue to run in the background on, on the server. So to commit a game to the creep, use this button or control enter. The code for each tutorial section is its own branch. And you have branches here. So then it wants you to, to send a creep to harvest energy and you need to use the methods described in the documentation below. The harvest method requires energy source that is adjacent to the creep. You give orders to a creep by its name. Use the find sources to find, send your creep to the harvest. All right, so we're gonna copy paste this code and we'll put it in there. So basically this code says, okay, find the creep called harvester one, find the sources, which is gonna be one of this guy, and then call harvest on it. And if it's not in range, if it returns a not in range error, then move to it. So we'll commit that with the commit button. And here we go, he's moving along. So he's basically executing this command, this move to, because he's not in range. Okay, now he's in range. Now he's doing the harvest command, and you can see he's slowly carrying more and more energy. He's got 16 energy and so on. To make the creep transfer energy back to the spawn, you need to use method transfer. However, remember, it should be done when the creep is next to the spawn, so it needs to walk back. So you can... So you can do that by adding a check. Carry energy is less than carrying capacity. We able to go back and forth, giving its own energy, returning to the source. All right, so copy paste that code, replace all that. So now it says, if your carry energy is less than your carry capacity, so if you're not full, if your inventory is not full, then do what we just were doing. But once you're full, then it's gonna do this code, which says transfer it to the spawn. And if that's not in range, then move to the spawn. Great, this creep will harvest until it dies. Remember that almost any creep has a life cycle of 100, 1,500 game ticks and then ages and dies. Another way, um, let's create another worker creep. It costs you 200 energy units, so you may need to wait. All right, so we'll copy paste this line and wait till we have 200 energy units at the spawn. Right now we have 150. We can also speed up the simulation. The real game, you cannot speed up private server you can speed up using a mod and we'll get into that in a minute when we get there so now we have 200 energy units and so now we can go back to the console spawn a new harvester hooray second creep is ready but it won't move until you go into the program so now you have to basically do a for loop in your script so now we're saying for each creep So now we can separate it into separate modules, create a module called role harvester, and define this, role.harvester. So now the code we've done is said we for each creep, get the creep name, or get the, go into the creep array, look up its name, and then get the creep object. So basically all the creeps are doing the same code, this code that we saw before. So now it wants, its, wants us to move this, some of this into a new module. So you can go create a new module name. It wants it to be called roll.harvester. And then let's put that code in there. And now you can rewrite the main module by doing a require roll.harvester and then doing this code. So basically splitting into different functions. So now the main loop is much better. Um, you can control and manage the work of many creeps. So now our current, um, so these guys, these, this is full now, 300, uh, 300 energy, so they can't transfer, so they stopped. So I could create another harvester, harvester three. And so now you can see if it's saying for each creep, run roll, harvester roll dot run, which is doing all this code that we saw before. And here's the run command, it's a new function that takes a creep in. So it's basically the same thing, but just calling, just moving into a function in a different file. No problem. All right, let's go on to the next tutorial. Upgrading the controller. In this tutorial, we'll talk about a key strategic object in your room, the room controller. 
by controlling this invincible structure. You can build facilities in the room. The higher the control level, the more structures available to build. You'll need a new worker. Let's call it an upgrader. And we'll give the upgrader the same stuff we saw before. Work, carry, move, and call it an upgrader. Copy paste that. Give it an upgrader thing. All right, so now we're based back in a new room with a harvester guy and we're spawning a new thing called an upgrader. All right, we want this. It's performing the same task as harvester. We don't want it to. We need to differentiate creep rolls. All right. So now we need to run these two things. To do that, we need to utilize the memory property of each creep to write, allowing it to write custom information to the creep's memory. Let's do this and assign different roles to our creeps. All your memory stored accessible with a global memory object. You can use it any way you like. We're at a property role harvester into the memory of the harvester creep and role upgrader in the memory of the upgrader creep. All right, so let's do that in the console. All right, so now we have the creep's memory has been adjusted. Let's go look at it. So if we go click, so if we pause the simulation and we go look at this upgrader guy, we click view memory and we look at, let's see, I think these are all old things and get rid of all this crap. All right, so we have creeps. Here's the harvester. Yeah, so it has a role guy called Harvester. And this guy has a role called Upgrader. So that's where that's what I just did with the console command. All right. Let's just get rid of that. All right. Get rid of that. All right. So let's resume the simulation and read this. So let's define the new behavior of the creep. Both creeps should harvest energy, but the should bring it the but the creep with the role harvesters bring it the spawn, while the creep upgrader should go to the controller and apply the function upgrade controller. To do this, you need a new module called let's make a new module called role to upgrader. Alright. And we want to give it this function. So just like we did before, the role harvester will call make a new 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 file called role to upgrader and give it all this code. So back in our main module, all the creeps run the same role. Now we need to divide it. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so now we have role to upgrader that's imported. And we can see here, can I change the font? I don't know if I can change the font in this game. I don't know if there's settings or anything like this to make it bigger. Yeah, I just did a quick search. You can't resize it in this editor because this is the game. In a web browser, you can. Anyway, um, so now we're saying for each creep, look at the memory.roll. And if it's a harvester, do the roll harvester action. And if it's an upgrader, do the roll upgrader action. So let's apply that. These guys in theory should be running. Is there an error? Uh, it's like 300 energy looks like. Let's create a new dude called Upgrader2. Okay, so we created a spawner, uh, Upgrader2. And let's see if it's Upgrader. So this guy should be doing some work. Why is he not? Disable the roll harvester for a second. And let's take a look at his memory. Looks like his memory got cleared. Maybe I accidentally cleared it. Oops. 
I need to set it again. Okay, there we go. Let's also give the upgrader two. All right, there we go. And then let's un uncomment that one. All right, so now the upgraders basically are getting memory or getting uh, getting energy. I wonder why they're only carrying a small amount. Harvester upgrader. Harvest. <laughs> That's a really weird code. If it's equal to zero, then get a little bit and get like one. How about we just uh, do this code? There we go. Yeah, so now though, I guess I just wanted to quickly do it, quickly show you how it works. So now they're just gonna harvest up to their carry capacity. So they're, this guy is 50 now, and then now he's gonna go upgrade the controller with the energy he's got stored. And if he's out, outside of range, he's gonna move to the controller. And as you see, he shoots like a lightning beam right there. And he's, he only did it once, and that's dumb. So, yeah. More code to be written. I'm not gonna mess with it now since it's just gonna end the tutorial. But basically, you want him to empty his out, empty, uh, empty his energy out into the controller. Anyway, so now you, if you don't upgrade your controller within 20,000 ticks, it loses one level. Upon reaching level zero, you lose control of the room, and another player will be able to capture it freely. So make sure you have at least one creep regularly performing the actions of upgrade controller. Alright, building structures. The controller upgrade gives access to some new structures, walls, ramparts, and extensions. We'll discuss walls and ramparts in the next tutorial, but for now let's talk about extensions. Extensions are required to build larger creeps. A creep with only one body part of one type works poorly, giving it several works will make him work proportionally faster. However, such a creep can will be costly and a lone spawn can only contain 300 energy units. To build creeps costing over more than 300 energy units, you need to build spawn extensions. The second controller... The second controller, level 5, has 5 extensions for you to available for you to build. The second controller level has 5 extensions. This number increases with each new level. So now we're on controller level 2. You can place extensions to any spot in the room and a spawn we can use them regardless of the distance. In this tutorial, we've already placed the construction sites for your convenience. So let's create a new creep whose purpose is to build structures. This process will be similar to the previous tutorial sections, but this time, let's set the memory for the new creep, creep right in the right method, create creep, by passing it a third parameter. So now we're gonna give it a third parameter called role builder. Okay. So now we spawned a builder guy with a role of builder. Okay, our new creep won't won't move until we define the role of builder. As of four, let's put it in a new separate module called role.builder. Building is carried out by applying creep.build in the construction site searchable by find construction sites. The structures require energy, which your creeps can har harvest on its own. To avoid having creeps run back and forth too often, but make it deplete cargo, let's complicate our logic by a new building called memory.building, which will tell the creep when to switch tasks. We'll also add a new creep.say call and visualize path style in the move to to visualize creeps intentions. So let's do that. So now we do a role.builder. Put that code in there. And now let's update our main with that. Okay, let's take a look at a role.builder. So a role.builder like before says if we're building and our energy is zero, then we're not building. So go harvest. If we're if that's if we're building and we're zero. So if we're not building and our energy is at carry capacity, then we are building, and now we're gonna go build. 
So if we're building, then go find construction sites and move to it. And if we're not building, then go find energy and harvest it. We're also visualizing the past style using the stroke, which is kind of neat. What happens if you change it like this? Let's just make it white. Uh, I guess it doesn't apply to that one because we're not there yet. So I guess that one's a pure F. So you can see him like, yes, yeah, so now he's like doing a light brown. Which is pretty sweet. Didn't have that feature a year ago. And you can see when he switches modes because the creep will say something. Which is kind of interesting. Let's speed up the uh, simulation. See, now he's saying I'm going to go build. That's kind of neat. Engines have been built. Let's, now let's learn to work with them. Maintaining extensions required to teach your harvesters to carry energy not to us to a spawn, but also as extensions. To do this, you can use game structures, object, or search within the room for room find structures. In both cases, you will need to filter the list and the condition structure type is extension or alternatively blah blah and check them for energy load as before. So here's our harvester code that's upgraded. So now we have so before so this is the same this little part is the same except that we're visualizing it now and this part is pretty different. Before it used to basically just go to the spawn but now it says let's go find the structures and filter the structures and if it's either extension or spawn and the structure energy is less than the inner structure capacity for the energy, then we'll keep it. And if the target is greater than zero, then we'll just go and fill up the first target. To know the total amount of energy in the room, you can use the property room.energy available. Let's add that output to our thing and fill up all five guys. Okay. So we're just adding a log here. So for each room that we have, we say room has this amount of energy. So now in our console, it says, okay, we have 350 energy. So now if we speed up, this builder guy is paused because he's got nothing to do. So now we have 400 energy. energy okay all structures are filled with energy it's time to build somebody large in total we have 550 energy to work with in our spawn our extensions it's enough to build a creep with the body work 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 four works a carry in two moves this creep will move, work four times faster than a regular creep its body is heavier so I have to add another move to it however Two parts are still enough to move it at the same speed of a small fast creep that require four, which will require four moves or build a road. Spawn a creep with. This, name it. So we're gonna do four creeps. Oh, that was a bug. This has three works. This has four, oh, whatever. All right. So let's spawn a four guy and give it a roll of harvester. So now we have zero energy left. And now we have harvester two. And we'll see that he fills up pretty fast. He harvests eight energy per tick. Such creeps can completely drain an energy source before it refills, thus giving your calling him 
Colony a maximum energy boost. Hence, by upgrading your controller, constructing new extensions, and more powerful creeps, you considerably improve the effectiveness of your colony work. Also, by replacing, er, replacing a lot of small creeps with a, few, with a few larger ones, you save CPU resources on controlling them, which is an important pre prereq in, in the play in online mode. Next, we'll talk about manufacturing, automatic manufacturing of new creeps. All right, auto spawning creeps. Until now, we've created creeps directly in the console. It's not a good idea to do that constantly, since it, the very idea of creeps is to make your colony control itself. You will do well if you teach your spawn to produce creeps in the room on its own. It's a rather complicated topic, and many players spend months perfecting and refining their auto-spawn code. Let's try something simple and master some basic principles to start with. You have to create a new creep before they won't die at age for some reason. Just Since there are no events in the game to report death of a particular creep, it's easiest to count the number of required creeps, and if it comes less than the desired value, you start spawning. There are several ways to count. One of them is by filtering creeps with the filter function. Let's do that. All right, so we got this. And there we go. So now we have, now we look at the, we filter the creeps with the roll harvester and we say, here's how many harvesters there are. Let's say we want at least two harvests at a time. The easiest way to achieve that is to call create creep each time we discover it's less than this number. You may not. You may not define its name, it's giving automatically, but if but don't forget to define the needed role. You may also add some new room, vi room visual call in order to visualize what the creep is being spawned. So let's do that. So now we've added this code. So this code says if its harvesters are less than two, then tell the spawn to create a creep with work carry move with the role of harvester and then log spawning new harvester and it says if the spawn is spawning then the spawning creep equals this guy and visual text is a bunch of stuff all right so now we tell this guy to suicide tell harvester want to suicide to simulate what's going on and now that we lack a harvester, now we've got this room visual here. And we instantly spawned a new one for the new name. And important to note here is the memory of the dead creeps is not erased, but kept for later for reuse. If you create creeps with random names each time, it may li lead to memory over overflow, so you should be clearing it at the beginning of each tick prior to, cre prior to creep creation code. All right, so now we got for every if there isn't a creep of that name, then delete the memory. All right, now the memory of the erased of the deceased is regulated in order to oblivion to save us resources. Apart from creating new creeps after the death of old ones, there's a way to maintain the number of needed creeps by calling renew creep. Creep aging is a stable tutorial, so I recommend you familiarize yourself with that on your own. So you can basically go to the spawn structure and call this method called renew creep, which transfers energy into the existing creep to keep it alive longer. All right, defending your room, last tutorial. The world of creeps, creeps is screeps is not the safest place. Other players will have they have claims on your territory. Besides your room, can be invaded invaded by neutral NPCs occasionally. So you ought to think about your colony defense. In order to develop it successfully, documentation defending your room. This hostile creep has come from the left entry and attacked your colony. It's good that we have walls to restrain it temporarily, but they will fail sooner or later. We need to deal with the problem. The surest way to fend off an attack is to use the safe mode. In safe mode, there is no other creep will be able to use any harmful methods, but you'll still have to defend against strangers. I wonder what that means. You'll still have to defend against strangers. The safe mode is activated via the room controller, which is have activations available to use. Let's spend one activation to turn it on our room. Activate safe mode. 
So we're calling the room controller activate safe mode. So if we look at the controller, activate safe mode. Safe mode's activation is available one. Okay, now as you can see, the enemy creep has stopped the attack on the wall. Its harmful methods are blocked. We recommend you activate safe modes when your defenses fail. Now let's cleanse the room from unwanted guests. Tower is the easiest way to act to actively defend a room. They use energy and can be targeted at any creep in the room to attack or heal it. The effect depends on the distance between the tower and the target. To start with, let's lay the foundation of our new tower. You can set any place inside the walls for construction. I'll help a construction button. Place the construction site for the new tower. Manually or using code. So create construction site tower. Has started immediately on the construction. Let's wait till it finishes. So I have a new construction site here. And the progress is speed is 50%. And the builder guy is building it. All right, there we go. Our tower uses energy, so let's set the harvest to roll to bring the energy to other structures. You'll need to do this by adding a adding the tower in your code. Harvester. There we go. Excellent, your tower is ready to use. Like a creep, a tower has several methods. Attack, heal, repair. Each action spends 10 energy units. We need to use attack on the closest enemy upon its discovery. Remember, distance is vital. The effect can be several times stronger with the same energy cost. To get the tower object directly, you can use this, this thing. All right, so this goes into our main loop. So now we're doing this code, get object by ID, if tower, closest hostile, and if there is a closest hostile, attack him. All right, let's do that. So now we're shooting this dude. He's dead. Enemy creep is eliminated and our col colony can breathe easy. However, the invaded invader has damaged some of the walls during the brief attack. He'll better set up auto repair. Damaged structures can be repaired by both creeps and towers. Let's use a tower for that. We'll need to use the method repair. Since walls don't belong to any player, finding them requires constant, the constant find structures rather than find my structures. Okay. So closest damaged structure, tower repair. All right. All the damage from the attack has been repaired. Congratulations, you can play the tutorial. You have enough knowledge and code to start playing online. Choose your room, founder colony, and set out on your own quest for domination in the world of Screeps. If you want to delve deeper on the subtleties of the game, feel free to look at the docs, community forums, and Slack chat. Have fun scripting. All right, nice. All right, well, that's a good stuff for the episode. Next time, we'll come back and we'll start... Uh, start some programming probably won't play online mode but we will set up our own private server and mess with that thanks for watching see you next time